Opera's browser. Opera GX! Opera GX. Opera GX. Opera GX seems to be the internet's favorite browser. They have some credible names shouting them out in sponsorships, and they've basically made their own cult of Firefox haters. So naturally, I had to see what the hype was about. I regret that decision. Good evening, I'm Bagubuns, and I consider Opera GX a complete and utter waste of space. And I have before even downloading the thing. Just the way it tries to market itself and force itself onto you. Ugh. Whoa, they made a browser for gamers? I'm a gamer. They made a browser just for me. Gamers, does this actually work? It's not just me that thinks this is cringy, right? Obviously, we all spend a lot of time on the internet. So the thing that you use to browse the internet is important. Opera GX is sort of a spin-off from the plain old Opera browser. The entire shtick of this thing is to be built for speed and customizability. You got plenty of themes to choose from, it has a lot of useful widgets, it's very outspoken about its support of generative AI, and it also provides a video game release schedule to count down the years until a Yandere simulator comes out. <sighs> Not only that, but this is a browser for GAMERS and GAMERS. Gotta go fast. Well, I do consider myself a gamer, and I sure wouldn't mind my web browsing being optimized a little bit better. Opera GX's features are all things that are pretty desirable, so I went full gamer mode and bought into the marketing. And let me say this, if you care about browser aesthetics, then Opera GX may be a good fit for you. But if you care about literally anything else, I would not recommend it. And yeah, I know, I'm attacking a key sponsor of multiple channels, and that stuff's considered pretty taboo here on this site. But I think we should normalize attacking sponsors that deliver subpar products. And to me, Opera GX is a subpar product. I'll acknowledge that there are a fair bit of my own biases thrown in here, but there are also a ton of legitimately baffling things that Opera GX does. Here's why, in the one semester I spent with Opera GX, I've had one of the worst browsing experiences ever. If you use the internet, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That should be every single one of you. Opera's marketing skills are pretty miserable. I could talk all day about how cringy the whole GAMERS thing is as a marketing tagline, and Opera GX's VTuber is probably somebody's favorite content creator out there. Um, nom, 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 nom. But that stuff's mostly harmless, and I guess it works? No. I'm here to talk about something much worse. STOP BEING BORING! <laughs> Aren't you so glad you're using this browser? Now, I don't know anything about Eric Andre, or at least I didn't know anything about him before I started using Opera GX. Once I started using it, I felt like I knew too much about him. I mean, if his Instagram handle says anything about his personality, then I've got a pretty good idea about his style of comedy. All right, all right, I don't think I'm being fair. He seems like a good enough guy, and his shows are all really well received. But having his green screen cutout screaming every time I open the stupid browser for a short period of time isn't funny. Can somebody actually check in on Eric Andre? I don't think he's doing well. The first time this happened to me was 8 in the AM while I was in class and my volume was probably too loud. On the bright side, everybody in the classroom was wide awake and possibly very confused. On the flip side, it probably wasn't a good look for me, and it was actively disrupting my quality education. Nah, I'm probably sure it wasn't that big of a deal for anybody else, but it was really annoying. And from what I could tell, there wasn't any option to turn it off without literally digging through the files to delete the one that controls the splash screen. And then they removed it the day after, so what was even the point? The entire campaign was titled very boring, and I hate being bored as much as the next guy, but their attempt at being interesting or funny was something that nobody asked for. Okay, some people liked it, and while I'm sure most of us are fine with never witnessing that ever again, Opera still sort of gives you the option of living through that trauma again with their customizability options. But that dumb splash screen should have started off as some neat little customization thingy. It would have been more in line with Opera GX's brand, and it would have pissed fewer people off as well. So, you could probably tell that Opera GX enjoys being labeled the fun browser or something. To be completely honest, the entire Barry Boring campaign doesn't make a ton of sense to me because Opera GX's default mother browser, Opera, is the definition of default. So Opera GX is just as much of a jab at their own stomachs as it is to Chrome or Firefox. But if they would like me to believe that Opera and Opera GX are two different things, fine. 
Everybody likes to talk about how customizable Opera GX is. And obviously you could see the irony of that since we just discussed how Eric Andre's jump scare was basically forced onto everybody that used Opera GX for that entire 24 hours. Well, let's boot up Opera GX and... Hmm... It at least has personality, I guess. Alright, I don't like it. And I totally get it if you think that it's actually pretty cool, but this is my video, so I can do whatever I want. First of all, the icons and stuff aren't great. A lot of them are over-designed, and a lot of them aren't standardized with other web browsers. Browser extensions are normally represented by a jigsaw piece. Opera GX thinks it makes more sense as a Minecraft block. Come on, even Microsoft Edge got this one right, and they don't get anything right. Now I know that seems like a dumb thing to point out for a browser that wants to be exciting and different, but that kind of stuff makes a difference when you're dealing with competitive software. In every other browser, the three dots or three lines in the top right corner are meant to bring up the menu. That is the universal symbol for the menu. For Opera GX, those three lines bring up personalization options, which are non-essential. Upon further inspection, those aren't lines, those are sliders. And the little person icon doesn't have the menu in it either, so where could it be? How about the Opera logo on the complete opposite side of the screen? At least they keep the same keyboard shortcuts, so I instinctively use those, but whenever I need to do something specific like save a page as a PDF, I still instinctively move to the top right. That also brings me up to Opera GX's ever so special sidebar. I have mixed feelings about the sidebar. It's really nice to have because it allows me to have something like Spotify or Discord open without it cluttering up my tabs any further. But it also doesn't really have a good enough reason to add another bezel to my computer screen. Many of the apps that you can load onto the sidebar don't work well with the sidebar's aspect ratio, like Spotify. This is awful. And I also hate the fact that the sidebar is on the left, and it's absolutely mind-boggling that you don't even have the option to move it to the right. On every other browser, those key options are in the three dots on the top right, and the transition to Opera is jarring. At least Opera lets you hide the sidebar, and you can still access most of what the sidebar can offer in the menu. Just like every other stupid browser! You may have also noticed the GX corner, that miniature eyesore at the top left. It provides a hub for projected video game release dates, a row of games that Opera allows you to play for free, a crap ton of advertisements, and the GX Daily section, which is a stew of news, polls, and whatever else. I can see how this stuff could be pretty cool, but as somebody who doesn't really play games on launch and has better things to do than play Leaf Blower Revolution, this isn't something I really see myself using too much. So how do I shut it off? This tab is just glued there indefinitely. I tried asking forums and nobody knew how to do it either. Even if there is a way to get rid of it, Opera makes it impossible to find. And finally, GX mods. Opera GX's biggest selling point is just fine. If you're willing to learn the programming, you can customize the way Opera GX looks, sounds, and feels. But if you don't care enough like me, you'll probably just search for somebody else's theme to download for yourself. Mods usually include things like live wallpapers, background music, and miscellaneous sound. But I find myself turning a lot of these off because as cute as they are, the novelty wears off really fast. I listen to music when I'm writing stuff anyway, so I don't need the stock music in the background all the time. And those keyboard sounds are just too much. On top of the physical clicking of the keys, you also have the annoying Opera GX audio layered on top of that, and sometimes the soundbite doesn't even get to play all the way since I'd imagine most people type faster than 10 words per minute. I also doubt that Opera has the licenses to a lot of these properties. Almost all of these themes are user generated, except for the Minecraft one, which was the only one I found so far that was by the actual studios behind some of these IPs. I don't know if it's going to escalate into a legal issue, I just know that in the entertainment industry, if if a work of art is displayed, then the artist must get paid. And in this case, more often than not, the designated artist sure as heck ain't getting paid. Opera GX, for some reason, really slows my computer down. Despite it being called the browser of games and bragging about how buttery smooth it runs, it hands down runs the laggiest out of any browser I've tried. Do you see that? That's just pathetic. I've seen in lots of forums that Opera uses up a lot more RAM than usual, which is strange from a company that can't shut up about how it's more efficient than me with your mom last night.
And sure, Opera has performance enhancing tools built in. Your browser runs better on steroids, big deal. Most browsers also have a RAM limiter out of the box. The difference is the base versions of most browsers don't immediately hog your resources. I ran a test with five browsers, Brave, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and GX. All of these browsers are logged out and had all their extensions and bookmarks removed, and nothing is actively running on them. I turned off anything that may give the browsers an unfair advantage. So here's the raw data. Just as a reference, this is the background resource use when nothing other than the task manager is open. Okay, now this is how much the browsers are using up. Wow, look at that! Opera GX is actually better than all the other browsers at using the most RAM and CPU. That's actually one of Opera GX's few standout features. Opera GX also comes with certain tools like third-party cookie blockers and a sort of but not really VPN. I'll get more into that mess later. But the point is, these things slow down your device by default. It hogs a lot of resources from the internet, but it also means you could use the internet slightly more safely. That's the point. There is a trade-off that has to happen. Opera GX wants to be both fast and safe. And to be quite honest, it struggles to do both. I don't know if you guys know this, but complete internet privacy isn't really a thing. You are getting tracked and targeted for your data pretty much everywhere you go. Even when you're going into incognito mode to watch, you know, Twilight. So, they knew all along, huh? Hashtag Team Edward. So it's a good thing that Opera GX is committed to preserving the user's privacy with features like built-in ad blocking, third-party cookie blocking, and a built-in browser VPN. I read that straight from their website, and all these things come with their own caveats. Disclaimer, I am not an expert on any of these things, but I did do a lot of research. So if somebody more knowledgeable about this stuff than me wants to debate me in the comments, let me know. Opera GX's third-party cookie blockers aren't as useful as they may sound. Now if you don't know what cookies do, here's a little SparkNotes explanation. Cookies are small pieces of data that websites store on your device. Cookies are how websites remember your logins, give you customized ads, and it also declutters internet servers so eBay doesn't think you're a different person every time you enter the site. So, why would you want to block cookies? Because certain websites don't like following the laws of the internet, and they may use your data for the wrong reasons. But, a lot of sites ask you if you would like to allow cookies, and they're forced to disclose why they're using your data. To allow cookies or to not allow cookies depends entirely on what you're using the internet for. And don't worry, if you allow cookies on one site, the next site you go on can't see any of that stuff. Unless that website is operated by Opera. The cookie blocker doesn't block cookies from sites owned by Opera, so Opera will most likely be tracking your data by default. Which I guess is why I get so many ads shoved in my face that I didn't ask for. And honestly, I don't think I trust Opera any more than I trust companies like TikTok with my data. Even though Opera is a Norwegian company, they have investors from some unnamed and unknown Chinese technology companies. And I know despite people always fearing that anything to do with China is immediately spyware, that's not always true. Even though it is mostly true. Why do you think these investors are motivated to look abroad for companies to invest in? More often than not, it is to seek data and resources from foreign audiences. That is the same reason that many websites use cookies. But at least you know which sites have access to that stuff. When I'm using Facebook, I know Mark Zuckerberg can see me buying Twilight DVDs. But when I'm using Opera, it's not only Opera GX that has access to your information, it's an unknown entity and a powerful one at that if they're able to bid 1.2 billion dollars to Opera. And even if those last two points don't prove that Opera isn't locked in on security, it is undeniably suspicious how Opera GX straight up lies about their inclusion of a VPN. Well, sort of. Opera's VPN is considered a web proxy, which means that it still hides your IP address, but doesn't hide your data like a real VPN would do. And don't get me wrong, hiding your IP address is a very good thing because you don't want to reveal your digital identity. However, it doesn't mean anything if you don't also hide your data alongside it. If you're willing to ignore Opera GX's glaring design flaws for the extra stuff they offer you, then fine. Maybe whatever Opera GX offers will fit you like a glove. Maybe you really like the way it looks or feels. Maybe you formed a parasocial relationship with Opera GX's VTuber. But I feel like as somebody who cares about convenience, speed, and security, Opera GX is an extremely uncomfortable experience. It takes way too much effort to make Opera GX run optimally, and it underdelivers on their guarantees of privacy and customizability. Opera GX definitely works. 
but it isn't as special as advertised. I guess I'll never be <laughs> enough to use Opera GX, but I do have a better browsing experience in spite of that, so that's a trade off I'm willing to take. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. <laughs>